Beautiful, beautiful. Long day? Yeah? All right. All right. So I know uh, everybody here slyly wants me to do stand-up comedy, but no. I know that's what everyone, I know that's why you guys have me here, but no, I will only do a purely inspirational talk today. All right, guys? If every person here doesn't leave feeling changed inside, then we have all failed at our jobs, right? So, uh, but uh, anyway, so thank you for having me here. Uh, my name is Naveen Richard. I am a uh, comedian and as you can tell by the caps lock letters after that, I'm also a lawyer. B-A-L-L-B, honors by the way. Where's the laser pointer here? Which one's the laser? Yes, honors. It's serious stuff we're talking about here, all right? Uh, you might not believe me, you might think I'm joking, a comedian and lawyer, well, what are you, some kind of genius? <laughs> um, no, you see, uh, I do have a law degree, I don't know where it is right now. When, when I graduated, I gave it to my parents and then they lost it, I think, I don't know. <laughs> um, how do I press next? I, but just to prove it to you that I am in fact, not a lawyer, but I have a law degree. This is a picture of me from my graduation day. Uh, that's me over there. How do I, how do you know that this is not Photoshop? It's because I don't know how to use Photoshop. <laughs> I'll prove it to you. This is some other attempts at me trying to bring attention to my face. I didn't know how to, I tried to bring attention to my face, but I covered it instead. I tried to use some other shapes, but I still failed. I couldn't figure out how to use Photoshop. So this is, so you know that's me for real. Um, the reason I'm so insistent on proving that I'm a lawyer is because that's the only use I have for my law degree at this moment in my life. So I like to shove it in people's faces. Whenever I can, my father paid a lot of fees and he lost the degree. So now I just show you guys that I have this. This picture is all I have. Uh, now, you probably know uh, a comedian as being a stand-up comedian. Everyone's heard about stand-up comedy. It's really blown up over the last five years. But me as a comedian, personally, uh, I look at myself as a comedian, not just on stage with one mic doing stand-up, but also when I do uh, sketch comedy. You know, as characters, me and a friend will go up and do six, seven different kinds of sketches. That's character-based comedy. Uh, sometimes I'll do stand-up as different characters. You know, that's another genre of comedy. That's like alternative comedy. Uh, I also will be a comedian when I'm acting in front of the camera for a web series on YouTube. Um, I'm also a comedian when I'm writing for the shows that I'm going to be acting. That also, that also involves being a comedian, you know. It's not just about stand-up. Um, so, with all of this, what will be the theme of my speech here today at this prestigious school? I don't know, actually. Let's figure it out. We're going to figure it out along the way, and that's the plan. We're just going to figure it out along the way. You and me, we'll figure out where this goes, all right? So, let's start at the beginning, all right? Um, where am I from, and so on and so forth. I am from a small village in Tamil Nadu called Idulla Idu Elampoi. Idu Elampoi. Um, are there any Tamilians in the house today? Any Tamilians? All right, sir. Idu Elampoi. So you understand. Have you been there, sir? Maybe. So Idu Elampoi. Um, let me tell you something about it. It was a small village. My parents they met at the coconut plantation. Uh, my younger brother he's still uh, at this village, and uh, he is uh, becoming one of the fastest coconut tree climbers over there. <laughs> why, why are you laughing? I'm very proud of him. The school I went to was very small. They always had a water shortage, which is ironic because I had to swim across the river to get to the school. You know. Um, and all of this would, I think, is what gave me my uh, uh, sense for comedy, you know, the irony of it all. And all of this would be extremely inspirational for a TED Talk if it were true. But as you can see, it's not true. The real reason I am here on stage today as a comedian is because of this. Um, it's not just any pizza, it's a homemade pizza. All right, doesn't make sense. But let me explain. When I was young, I was very like my for as long as I can remember. I, I remember when I was early on, I was a I was a skinny little cute kid, you know. I was just killing it at every fancy dress competition I used to go to. You know, this is me in my first fancy dress competition, Charlie Chaplin, and I won first prize, first fancy dress competition, first prize. I remember apparently I improvised on stage. The judges were blown away. First prize. 
I think one of the judges was my mom's friend, so that might have helped, but even otherwise. <laughs> otherwise also, this is me as Lil Gandhi. This was not for fancy dress. My grandfather was an artist and a photographer, and he needed a model to pose, so he would make me dress up. Here is a racist depiction of an unidentifiable race. I'm not sure which race my grandfather was going for, but you know, still first prize though. And then, at the peak of my fancy dress competition career, and me playing all these characters, I was really, I was really doing well for myself. And then, this happened. This is the affordable home oven. This combined with my aunt's pizza making skills, okay, one summer led to my downfall. At the ripe young age of two years, no, six years, I don't remember how old I was, that size. What happened is one summer, she learned how to make pizzas in this oven that she bought, you know, and uh, I was staying at a house in Kerala, and as she learned how to make pizza, I learned about obesity, you know. <laughs> So she was practicing how to make pizza and I was practicing new pants like putting on. And then from that summer on, you know, I put on so much weight for the rest of my life. I was just this chubby little, cute little kid as you can see, you know, it just changed me completely. And you might think, why, why are you fat shaming yourself? That's what I did to myself. I, I kind of got lethargic. I went from being the fastest runner in my class to slowly my body kind of just like, you know, just deteriorating. And, and I kind of, I, I remember I became self-conscious and this and that, but maybe that's also, and I remember, you know, the f crazy thing is, I stopped winning fancy dress competitions. This guy here is my best friend. He's my best friend. He, he won fancy dress first prize. I came third that year. Can you believe it? It's crazy. Anyway, so that was the downfall. And my dad was so ashamed of me getting, you know, just like becoming this lazy slob that he's decided to send me to a boarding school over here, this beautiful little place here. And uh, that this school reminds me a lot of that place. You know, the hall in there reminds me of exactly this place as well. And over there, I kind of got beaten into shape, both metaphorically and literally. <laughs> they beat me into shape. But while I was getting back in shape, I also learned a lot of things about myself. I learned that I could sing. I could learn that I could act. You know, I learned that I could write, uh, you know, creative writing. And I, I directed my own play. And we traveled with that play to all sorts of other schools. And, and that's where I think I really kind of figured out that I was finally good at something. Because all my life I thought I was very average. You know, in school and everywhere else, I felt very average, you know. I knew I was the class clown, but in every other aspect I felt like, man, you know, the, all of these other guys, they, they're killing it at some aspect or the other, but I, I just felt average. But here I felt, I think I have this one little power and I don't know what to do with it. So now you're probably wondering, so now I mean, why didn't you study mass media or something, dude? Why didn't you do like some creative writing course or journalism? I thought I wanted to, but of course my parents stepped in, my dad was like, yeah, why do you want to do journalism, it's such a narrow thing. Take something like law, you know, it's wide, you can do so much after law. My mother convinced me by saying, imagine you want to get married to someone one day, and that girl's parents ask you, what's your educational qualification, and you say, I have an acting degree, that's not going to be very nice here. Can you believe that, and that's the reason I endured five years of law school, five years just because I had to prove to my hypothetical parents-in-law <laughs> that I have a degree. They didn't even exist. I was trying to please people that I didn't even know existed. It was crazy. Um, so I'll tell you why though. I, why I don't regret going to law school was five years and I never failed one single subject, even though it was very hard for me to get through it, you know. I mean, I would study for four days for one exam. My roommate would study for one day and he would get better marks than me. And the reason I studied so hard is because I hated studying so much. I hated exams so much that I never wanted to write an error or a re-exam again. So I studied so hard, I just like hate, I'm like, oh, I hate all of this. I'll just mug everything up. And then I studied and then I passed and I never failed one exam. But that aside, what happened when, you know, when I used to sit in school and when I used to sit in college in classes, I felt like my time was just being so wasted. I never, nothing was going into my head. Uh, I wasn't really assimilating what was going on. And again, I felt very average throughout. Uh, but it was also very frustrating. Sitting in class made me so frustrated that in the evenings, I forced myself to go and find something creative to do. So I would go and audition for plays and, you know, I would start making videos with my friends. Just some kind of thing in the evening for, to make myself feel a little better. Like, I'm like, man, I waste six hours of my day sitting in class for attendance. And then I started doing plays and figuring out all of that. 
That's why I don't regret going to law school. What if I take in something like journalism or acting school, where my creativity was fulfilled during the day, that I wouldn't have gone and explored these other avenues later on in the evening, you know what I mean? I would have been like, well, I'm doing a creative thing and I'm happy with it. I would have never really explored what else I could have done. And also, you know, life works in mysterious ways, right? Like if I take in BCom, it would have been three years of the degree and then I would have had to get a job two years later and I've never been able to explore stand-up comedy and things. Because I had law for five years, I had these two extra years living off a little bit of my dad's money to explore stand-up comedy and stuff like that, you know? And then now I've made it and, you know, it's all, it's all, it's all okay. So that's why I don't regret doing law school. Um, that's all nice, Naveen, but how did you climb the ladder to success? Huh? I know that's what you're wondering. Isn't that, I can see the faces pointing a laser at you. Mm. I know. Oh, did it change? Sorry. It's on the same thing, right? Okay. <laughs> so here's the thing, you know, with, if you're going to go for um, your run-of-the-mill kind of a, a degree, if you want to be the CEO of a company, there's a certain ladder that you've all heard of, you know, either intern, MD, FD, CD, whatever, CEO. With, with a, a creative field or, uh, you know, the offbeat fields, you don't know what ladder, what does a ladder look like? There's no real way of figuring it out. You just kind of have to figure it out along the way. You just have to kind of follow what your gut says and just keep working and creating something and figuring it out along the way. Um, so this is what I thought, my plan in my head. I thought this is traditional. Six years ago, this was how someone would have made it if you wanted to be an actor or a comedian. You think you're going to do some, some theater, and then you think you're going to get like a radio job, so you have a following, and then I thought maybe that'll get me noticed and get me a television show, right? And then I thought from television, I'll get into movies. That was my plan. But it didn't quite work out that way. That's not how life works out, right? So I did theater, and then... Did I skip something? I feel like I skipped something. Just can you edit that part where I messed, it, messed up? I'm going to start again, okay? <laughs> so movies. <laughs> um, so what happened? This is what I thought was going to happen. Um, but instead what happened is something completely different, you know? I, I just kind of kept making YouTube videos with my friends. And, uh, and then suddenly, s somehow, I just kept making YouTube videos with no money at all. What, what's the next slide? I felt like, a, did I skip a whole bunch of slides? Oh, that, what, what the hell happened? That's why I skipped. Why didn't you tell me guys, I, I skipped through all of these? This is, my, this is where my life all came together and I skipped right through it. <laughs> thinking I was pressing the laser button. Anyway, it's going great so far. Beautiful. TEDx, please edit that out. All right. So this is a, a little group I started with my friends from school, you know. Uh, after college, one of them went and got an economics degree. One of them got an aerospace degree. One of them viscom and I got my law degree. We came together and we made this group called Them Boxer Shots. This logo, we made it on paint. You know, paint, we made it on paint. We were just having fun. Um, we didn't know what the plan was. We just told ourselves, we're going to take this one camera and shoot what we can and figure it out along the way. So then we made videos like this. This is called Three Many Cooks. This is one of the first videos we ever shot. That's me. That's my friend Money. Uh, he's the aerospace guy. He's an economics something degree he has. Um, and we didn't know what we were doing, you know, what the video should have taken one day to shoot. We took like a week to shoot it because we were just figuring it out. And the camera would go from dark to light because we didn't know something, there's something called an ISO setting. We didn't understand any of this simple stuff. Uh, but we just shot it, right? This is about uh, three cooks trying to figure out uh, how to cook as a reality show mockumentary. This is a video about a watermelon that stabbed me and it rolled away. You can see a watermelon there. <laughs> Why did we shoot a watermelon thriller video? I'll tell you why. Because one day we were sitting together and we didn't know what to make. We were like, man, we've got to make something today. We've got to make something. And we spent three hours thinking about what we're going to do. And we couldn't come up with anything. So my friend Mani said, you know what, I'm going to go buy one watermelon. We'll make some watermelon juice. So he brings these two watermelons back and we're like, oh, watermelon party, yay! And I said, no, no one's touching this watermelon juice till we make something today. And I said, then we're going to make something with this watermelon. So we thought about this watermelon. I, we were figuring it out along the way. I remember we were just shooting a video where we were catching watermelons, right? We were throwing the watermelon. And then one watermelon fell down and broke. So I said, okay, this is the story. It's about one watermelon breaking, the other watermelon falling, feeling bad for this watermelon. And then this watermelon goes around plotting the revenge against the two guys who killed it. <laughs> that was the story. And it was the most fun thing we've ever done. We shot it in one day. And the reason I'm telling you this 
and all of these details is because a lot of people come and ask me, you know, man, I don't know how to start this YouTube thing. Where do I start? How do you learn how to write and this and that? I say, I, I don't know, man. You just, uh, you just uh, figure it out along the way. You know, just kind of make it. Don't, like, give yourself a deadline and then just make something that day. And so then, now, how did I climb the ladder to success? Like I said, there's no ladder. Because we made all of that random stuff, all we knew and all we kept telling ourselves is, I don't know, by the way, we weren't getting great views on this. On YouTube, we didn't get a million views. We got like 1,000, 2,000 views. We had like 2,000 subscribers, which is nothing. Um, but because we just made stuff that was funny to ourselves, that was the only uh, kind of, uh, that, you know, benchmark we gave. We didn't compare ourselves to anyone else. We just said, you know, we're four friends, we're going to make each other laugh. And that's, that way we can defend our work for as long as it takes, right? Anyone comes and tells us your stuff's not funny, we're like, it doesn't matter, we find it funny, and that's what matters. And because of that, one day someone found us and gave us the opportunity to start making bigger shows that led to um, this show. This is like a show that I made with all my friends. You, now you know Sumuki, Kanan Gil, Utsav, Anirban. These are all like other comedians and actors who came together to collaborate to help me make this show happen. And it was a big show, like huge budgets. We had a vanity van, and it turns out it was John Abrahams, all right? So it's good for us, bad for John Abraham, all right? <laughs> and then we also made this show with my friend Kenny Sebastian. You guys know Kenny? You know, it's a science fiction comedy. It's a completely different genre. It's about three South Indian boys in a spaceship looking for puffs. That's it. It's like just silly jokes. It's like if, six, if in Sixth Standard you were asked to make a show, this would be the show we made. And we couldn't believe people were giving us money to make this show. And again, the only uh, parameter we kept, right, when we were writing jokes, we didn't know if anyone else would find this funny. Kenny and I would be like, listen, we have tears in our eyes from laughing, so this is going to go into the script. That was a parameter. And then, like, a lot of people found it funny, a lot of people hated it, but like I said, I defend it, I'll defend it to the day I die, you know. Uh, damn it, this is forward. God damn it, there needs to be clearer buttons on this. Uh, this is another show I made. Uh, sorry, I had to censor this middle, uh, this finger out. Um, this is a, this is a, I'm bringing more attention to it. I'm making it worse. I'm making it worse. This, this is a show I made with my friend Sumuki. Um, uh, she got a sh chance to make a show for Amazon. And we were friends, right? And she knew I could write. So she called me over to write the show with her. And before I knew it, I was writing a show for Amazon. Amazon didn't even exist when I started making my videos. Where did it come? It just came along the way, you know, it didn't make any sense. And, and then I also got to play like this negative, like screaming character that I would have never gotten to play. It just kind of happened along the way. Um, and this is a live sketch comedy show. Again, I made it with Sumuki. And when we made this show three years ago, um, we just did it because there was a venue in Bangalore free and we wanted to fill that date. And we said, you know what, we like working with each other, let's just come up with something. Nobody came. There were like 20 people. For the next few shows, there was like 10, 20 people, 10, 20 people. We just stored and filled up. And then now there's a big platform like Amazon or someone who wants to buy it. We didn't know that was going to happen. We just did it because we felt like it was fun to do it. We're just figuring it out along the way. Uh, and I also got a stand-up special as well. You know, it just, everything just kind of fell in place. So what I thought was my linear plan just turned into this mishmash of random stuff that was happening because I knew someone from here who introduced me to someone here who kind of liked what I did here, so this happened and this happened. So there's no real plan, you just... I hope you guys are... you know what I mean. So, uh, okay, so now you might be wondering where, where... What's the time? Oh, I crossed my time by one minute. All right, we're almost at the end, all right. Where did I learn how to write? I didn't really learn how to write. Okay, now you guys know what this is, right? This is a Sudoku. How many people like doing Sudokus? All right, don't show off about it, relax. <laughs> I am terrible. How long does it take you to do a Sudoku? Did you say you, did you say you did, yeah. Who, who, who said Sudoku? Yeah, how long does it take you to do a Sudoku? Uh, one, hour. one hour? Okay. Great, thank you very much. Uh, I take, I have never finished a Sudoku in my life. <laughs> never, I can't even, this looks like Minesweeper, that game. I can't even figure out what's going on over here. So I don't even attempt to do it. Like, don't even get me started on Rubik's Cubes. I can't figure that stuff out. But a script, I can finish writing a script, like a 10-page script faster than I can write, do a Sudoku in. It's probably because I don't know how to make do a Sudoku, you know? Um, 
but somehow like i can this makes sense to me like comedy jokes make sense to me like i don't know how this works but like a joke if you tell me a joke like it's like playing tetris for me you know like you know how tetris there's just like a piece coming in you have to see if this piece goes in here like the, a joke is kind of like that i know what shape of joke um the rest of the structure needs i don't know that makes sense that like my mind works technically like that that's the only way like you put a block where this is supposed to go someone tells me a block joke i'm like no that joke doesn't work we need something that makes sense and that makes sense to me um so what's next i don't know i'll just figure it out along the way thank you very much thank you very much ladies and gentlemen thank you